Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I'm gonna show you different length fasts and how you can lean in the, into them to help with depression. Whether it's acute or chronic, there's some really cool research, and I wanna give you very applicable fasting lengths so that you can build a fasting lifestyle that really helps you overcome depression. Do a long fast one day, your blood sugar going up and down. We're in it together. Let's go through basics of what is happening in the neurons in our brain in a depressive state. Now, I wanna just point out that one of the things we know, or one of the things that I am a huge advocate for is what we call a multi-therapeutic approach. So fasting should be a part of every treatment plan because that's how your body was designed to be just like sleep. Sleep should be a part of everybody's health plan. Now, knowing that, we also know that we can lean into different length fasts to create different neurochemical responses in the body. And that's what I really wanna share with you today is what are those length fasts and how can you use them to your joyful advantage? So let's start with what is happening in the neurons. Literally trillions of neurons in your brain. And these neurons carry information. So when a thought comes across one neuron, it goes over to another neuron and it has to keep connecting the information through what we call a synapse. The neurons don't actually touch. There is this gap in between them. How information can get across from one neuron to the next depends on two major things. The first, is you have to have healthy receptor sites. So I'm gonna blow this up because I really want you to see this, that when you look at the end of a neuron, there are all these little receptor sites that are sending neurotransmitters across, that are receiving neurotransmitters. They are openings for chemicals to go out and to come in. And in a healthy neuron, we've got lots of them you will see that in a neuron that's not functioning at its best, that many times these receptors get blocked, where they're locked with like a heavy metal or a plastic or even glyphosate, a pesticide can jam those up. Second thing that you, these synapses need, and that is neurotransmitters. Now neurotransmitters, most of them are made in your gut. So if you have a really imbalanced gut, you're not gonna be able to make enough neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters, think of them as they ask, act like escorts that will take information from one neuron and pass it across to the next neuron. So if you have a joyful thought, you need to have both the receptor site and the neurotransmitter to get that joyful thought to go across to the next neuron. And then more joyful thoughts and more joyful thoughts will start to happen. Now, in a depressed state, one of the things that we know is that those receptor sites are not as open. Or in some of the cases, this can even be in long-term depression, many of these receptor sites have now been shriveled up and degenerated and they're not functioning anymore. We also know that in a depressive neuron or in a depressed state, we don't have as many neurotransmitters. In this video, I'm not gonna really dive into gut. I've done a lot on gut. I'll show you a few of the fasting lengths that can help with these neurotransmitters. But what we know is a lot of times a depletion of neurotransmitters is due to a gut imbalance. When you pair those two things where receptor sites have now degenerated, they're blocked, and the gut is not making enough of those neurotransmitters, you have neurons that are gonna be more prone to depression. And when you, we, there's a lot of mental health conditions we can apply to this scenario, but we're talking about depression right now. So what do we know from our fasting principles to be able to repair this neuron? Can we bring this neuron from this state back to this state? And the answer is yes, because our, you're living in a self-healing, self-repairing body. So once you understand why the body has gone out of balance, we can tap into your own internal mechanism to repair itself, which is so crazy cool. 
So I, there are one, two, three, four, five different things I look at when I customize a fasting length for a patient to be able to repair that neuron so joy can happen. First is autophagy. We love autophagy. Okay, autophagy, basically that means you repair yourself and these receptors here need to be repaired. So with autophagy, we know 17 to 72 hours of fasting, that window is a sweet spot for autophagy. So when you're building yourself a fasting lifestyle, make sure you don't have to do that every day, but make sure you're throwing in some of those longer fasts, that you're going longer than 17 hours. I really like when we've got some chronic conditions, especially when it relates to depression, I really like to see that we go 17 hours at least five days a week so that you can stimulate autophagy and clean up this neuron. Second thing, ketones. Okay, we love ketones because ketones will help make a neurotransmitter called GABA. You'll hear, hear me talk about GABA in a moment. But they also, what ketones do, is they can go in and repair this whole neuron. So if there's some degeneration that's happening, we can go in and repair that degeneration. When we're dealing with mood, a lot of the de degeneration that happens is in the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that, that controls mood and memory. So the more you can lean into this ketogenic state, the more we can create repair in there. So I look at autophagy and I look at ketones as our repair mechanism. Okay, M perhaps my new favorite uh, neurotransmitter, protein, whatever we wanna call it, is BDNF. BDNF is like brain fertilizer. It is miracle growth for your brain. And what we know about BDNF is that BDNF will help you grow new neurons. We also know that Depressive states are low BDNF. So when we bring BDNF up, what we can do is we can create new healthy neurons. So these two, autophagy and ketones, help to repair this, but what BDNF does is BDNF creates more new versions of this. So I call them baby neurons. What we know about BDNF is that we can do, and this is based off of research, a lot of the studies on BDNF have been done around Ramadan fasting, where they go 12 hours about dry fasting. So that's no food, no water. I've heard it referred as, uh, as circadian fasting. Now what's interesting about that style of fasting, what's interesting about BDNF is you can't just throw one fast at it. You need to do it over time. So the research shows, and I'll put the, article, the links in the, in the notes so you research hounds can go look at it, is that four weeks, which is typical Ramadan style, of this circadian fasting can improve BDNF by quite a bit. There's no actual number, because I know you guys like the numbers, but it will improve BDNF production. So it's the consistency. Another really cool study that I found showed that 12 weeks of 16-8 intermittent fasting so that's 16 hours of fasting, eating in an eight hour window for every day for 12 weeks can improve BDNF production. So those of you that are looking for a more regular rhythm to your intermittent fasting, that 12 week version can really help with BDNF production. Women, I just wanna point out that I am constantly reminding you how important it is to vary these fasts with your menstrual cycle. And so go watch the videos that I've done on that because that would be the only like caveat to this 12 week that I would say is make sure you're minding your hormones. Okay, last two things I wanna point out. GABA, dopamine, and serotonin. Both of these, all three of these are neurotransmitters. So the, they are gonna help carry the joyful thoughts across the neurons. GABA, will calm thoughts down. So this is great for the anxious person. GABA calms us, and you get GABA anytime you get ketones. Ketones, by the way, can come in somewhere or any about 13 hours plus of fasting, you'll start to make ketones. So just fasting in general, when we go to make ketones, we are improving GABA. Let's talk about dopamine. So GABA is calming. Dopamine is the molecule of more. It's what we're all going for. But the problem with dopamine is that when you get it, you want more of it. 
So when we look at dopamine, we really also need to look at serotonin. Because when dopamine gets, you get that dopamine high from whatever it is, maybe it's a ding on your phone or a like on your social media or an incredible experience. Yeah, we want to have that experience, but then we want serotonin to come in and do its job because serotonin tells us everything's great. It's all going to be good. You just did something amazing. You don't need more. So these two are really important in combination and there are Two really important fasts that I like or styles of fasting that I like to be able to upregulate dopamine and serotonin. The first one, and I advocate for this all the time, we've done this in fast training weeks, I think you all will love this and we get a lot of great feedback from it, 48 hours of fasting resets your dopamine pathways. It also creates new receptor sites for dopamine. So now that you understand that a healthy neuron, a joyful neuron has more receptor sites, let's make more of them by throwing some of these 48 hour fasts in. They're also in the same study that showed that BDNF comes up in a 12 weeks of 16-8. We also know that, that serotonin will come up in a 12 week trial of 16-8. So, you got a lot of choices here. I mean, there, these are a lot of different ways we can approach fasting. When we're looking at it from a weekly angle, let's make sure we're getting 17 hours in on a regular basis because then you're getting autophagy, then you're getting ketones, then you're getting dopamine and serotonin. You're actually, and if you do that over time, you're getting all of this. So it's the regularity of fasting that's going to start to change these neurons. And those of you that have been fasting for a while, let's put in the notes if you've noticed more joy, if you've noticed that you are a happier person, because fasting literally repairs this whole mechanism, but it has to be done over the long haul. And you need to go into some of these longer fasts, 16 hours for sure, and you need to do that on a more regular basis. If you're going 16 hours, just go 17. You might as well go there. And if you want to really reset those dopamine receptor sites, throw a 48 hour in every once in a while. If you want to reset this whole system, a three day water fast is amazing. We just did one in my academy group and it was incredible, incredible to see how much joy people had after that experience. Now you could easily say, yeah, you had joy because you just did this incredible endeavor that you should feel proud of, but it's more than that. You, you upregulated all of this, you reset the whole system in the brain, and now you can be a more joyful person, you can think more joyful thoughts. So I hope, put it in the notes, put it in the comments, let me know if this was helpful, let me know if you've seen mental health improvements as you have fasted longer. If you guys are new, please go, go look at those comments because we're an incredible community here that is, are all applying these principles of fasting. And if you want to know how to build a fasting lifestyle, come join me in my Reset Academy. That's what we're doing, is helping you customize fasting. Because as you can see, there's a lot of different variations. There's a lot of ways to approach this. And it's really important that you find your way. And that's what we do in my Reset Academy. If you want more information on it, just put Reset Academy in the notes. And as always, just what Whatever you do, do not give up on yourself. You are not meant to live in a depressed brain for your entire life. There, if you've even had trauma, if you've had tons of stress in your life, you can still undo it because you're living in a self-healing body that always is working for you, not against you. You are a true miracle. And as always, I hope that helps.